So you're kind of stuck with me. We'll do the best we can. Sing lustily, as it says in the beginning of the hymnal and the directives from John Wesley. If um, you are a young person, our children's sermon is going to be during the prelude, and then we'll talk about it during the children's time, okay? So that's, we're just pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. So because of that, if you are a young person or young at heart and would like to experience the incredible beauty of these instruments that Alex and Ari are going to play for us um, during the prelude, you are welcome to come and sit in the first two rows to do that. Be or you can stay where you are, and then during the children's time we will talk about it. But you are in for a real treat. Um, the Holy Spirit just moves through these instruments and through these two incredible musicians. So thank you for being here. That's another pivot. The third pivot, because we're Trinity, right? <laughs> the third pivot is that for the uh, congregational meeting that we're having after worship, we're going to move from this space into the library where there is already set up all kinds of red Pentecost-themed foods, including these incredible cherry bomb tomatoes. They are the bomb, I'm telling you. So that and deep time coffee and some cranberry juice and plenty of seating in the library. That way, um, Patricia Sands studio can set up for their recital immediately following worship. And that recital is at three, three o'clock and everyone is welcome to come to that recital. All right. Are there any other pivots that I'm missing before I continue announcements? All right. And as I'm looking back this way, I just want to say thank you for the donation of the lovely Pentecost flowers. It's always a treat when we have those, and those are pretty darn exquisite. Trinity has a long-time relationship with Gudger's Florist. I'm not saying this to give them a plug. I'm saying this just to say thank you. They have been very good to Trinity over the years for all kinds of occasions, and they do lovely work because they are working in their zone, aren't they? This is their gift. All right, there are tons of other announcements. I'm going to leave most of them um, for the good of this body to be able to read. I ask your prayers for the family of Daryl Parker, who passed away on May 8th. We do not have any other details about a service at this time. As soon as we do, we will let you know by email and by phone chain. What else? what I like to lift up. So we've talked about the meeting today and the recital today. Book group is on this week, getting through part three of this incredible local read. If you've um, never read the Sky Club or heard about the Speakeasy that was a historical um, fixture in Asheville, I highly recommend the book. I just recommended it to the head of the Biltmore House as I took family through there last Sunday. It's a, it's a good read. A little spicy in some sections in a good <laughs> that's all I'll say about that and I'm gonna ask if there are any deep time announcements um, there are no huge announcements okay. outside of Otis can you stand up <laughs> so Otis is not going to be our intern he is our intern now through the yeah. summer <laughs> so last week was his first week and he sat in on staff meetings and he learned how to roast coffee by himself. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else you went through last week. Ate a lot of good food together. Say that again? Yeah, he sat in through counting. He learned how to count with the counters. Uh, y'all please uh, let Otis know how he might be able to be in ministry with y'all because he's the ministry intern for Deep Time, which means he's also the ministry intern for Trinity. I also want to say, Nancy, you, you mentioned the, the meeting that's right after worship in the library. That meeting is specifically for us to be in conversation about safe shelter. Yes. And uh, some of the safe shelter staff will be joining us. We're discerning if June will be a month that we might host. Safe shelter is very different than what winter shelter was two years ago. It'll be fully staffed. It'll be very clean. Uh, and we likely won't know that they are even here if they do uh, end up staying with us. Right. Thank you for yeah. getting some more meat on that. <laughs> and then the, um, the, the final deep time announcement is that we have 
three coffees that we premiered last week. Y'all have had the Queen's Awakening, which is the dark roast and light roast blend. We also have a 50-50, uh, which is half caffeination, half not. And then we have a Brazil, which I think is our best coffee. So if you're interested in any of that, talk to me, Otis, or GA. GA, folks know who you are, but raise your hand so folks can see who you are. <laughs> And that's all that I have, I think, for deep time and mission announcements. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much. All right, I'm going to invite our guest musicians to go ahead and get in place. And those who are reading for this Sunday morning, if we could have uh, maybe one at the wireless mic, um, one at this mic, and one at the pulpit. And I'm going to take Carrie's place because Carrie, unfortunately, is also sick. And Alex, her young adult child here, young adult, is uh, going to, um, uh, along with Ari, help out. Where Carrie was, is it just Ari or is it both of you? It's both of you. Yeah. Oh, awesome, awesome. All right. So here in just a few minutes, we will have this lovely, lovely um, prelude piece that is a gift. It is an excerpt of a piece called... Shadows. Catching Shadows, written by Ivan Trevino. Ivan Tre Trevino. Yes. And do you remember the year, about the year it was written? Uh, I always seem to like it. That's okay, but it's a contemporary piece. Yes. And when I was listening to this earlier in the week, they're um, offering this for a recital um, that was also going to happen today and has been postponed due to Carrie's illness. It is. Um, it was just stunning how it also felt like Pentecost to me. Wherever you have come from this morning, whether you're in person, joining and worshiping with us online, know that you are most welcome. Please be sure to fill out the attendance and registration paths. Send us a text or some kind of note to let us know that you're here. And let's fully give God our attention. Thank you. 
In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare, and in God's temple all cry, Glory! The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. I baptize you with water, and one more powerful than I is coming who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. The, the voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. May the Lord give strength to the people. May the Lord bless the people with peace. I invite you to rise for our opening. In body, we're in spirit. Number 57, we'll sing verses 1 through 5 and 7.
if you'll turn and pass the peace of Christ with your neighbors. by now, usually, what's one of my first questions? What's going on this week? <laughs> Anything new going on? Uh, two, weeks. two weeks left of school. Can you feel the Holy Spirit? Can I get a witness? Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Anything new going on, though? Anything you're looking forward to besides the ending of school? Is there something about the end of school you like? You're going to Canada. I'm going to make up a new song each week. Okay, yeah, because that's what I do. Great. And when do you, do you know when you leave for that? All right, right away almost. June 1st, we'll traveling mercies. Anything else? Anybody gotten in the water yet? Anywhere? Yeah? Fun? Was it cold? Yeah, it was cold, wasn't it? All right, so quick check-in. I am always happy to see each and every one of you. I hope you know that. I wanted to ask, tell me what you heard um, when our young adults were playing the marimbas. What did you hear in that music? What did you see? Did you feel anything? So I'm talking about all of our senses. You felt vibration, you felt sound. Okay, so you heard sound, and you felt the sound and vibrations. That's good. What else? Did you see anything? You thought, wow. So I'll share. I couldn't believe how they can hold all of those mallets, and then each mallet is doing something different. It just blows my mind. I also saw, well, let me, I shared, what did you see? Yeah, uh, I kept imagining like I was a scuba diver. <gasps> Ooh, oh, I like that. I kept finding new things that were the, the song. Okay, wow. 
Anybody else want to share what you heard, felt, saw, yes, imagined? Sure. At times, it felt, yesterday I was out and about, and it started raining, and first it was pop, 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 and then it came down harder, and so I sensed, like, nature and rain. Okay, so, nature and rain, like it was yesterday. I was trying to imagine, just thinking of that like a sense, how all of that music is in your head, because I saw no music, got it all memorized. Isn't that amazing what the brain can hold? Isn't that amazing? And as I already shared, I sensed the spirit moving through that, like moving through water or moving through rain. Last week we talked about everything having holiness because God created it. And so even through an instrument and through hands and through minds memorizing the music, we get to sense the Holy Spirit moving over that keyboard. Aren't those incredible instruments? Yeah, they really are. So if you'd like to hear the full nine-minute version of that song, come to the recital, hopefully next week. Call the church and we'll be able to let you know when that is. I want to send you home with a piece of homework. And in fact, I'm going to send everybody home with a piece of homework. And that is when and how, through all of your senses, do you feel, taste, hear, imagine, smell, see God coming close to you? How do you sense that wind of God coming into your life? Not really an easy question, but there may be times where you've thought about I sensed God when fill in the blank, okay? Will you talk about that with folks maybe over lunch today or this afternoon, okay? Or if you're underwater. All right, let's pray. Gracious and holy God, thank you so, so much for the gift of your spirit and the many, many ways your spirit moves in our lives, through us, through one another, through your creation. Thank you for the gift of these young people who also are teachers. Thank you for their creativity and all that they can hold inside their brains. Keep knitting us together as your church so that we might be your hands and feet for the world. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. And if I could have two volunteers to help with the offering, I don't know if anybody down front would like to do that. Would you? Would you? No? Okay. I just thought I'd ask. I thought I saw the hand go up. And the choir's going to come up and help. So I need two volunteers, please, to help with the offering. And we remember that offerings come in many forms. Prayers. Let's see if you can do the rest. Prayers. Presence. Witness. Service. And gifts. And these are our gifts. And all of us have so many gifts to give. Thank you for the many ways that you give throughout the week, whether it is through Trinity, through your own lives and your neighborhoods know that you are representing God as you do that. Thank you to the choir for this awesome Pentecost anthem and to, again, our guests. grateful for your presence. And obviously you know that Carrie's not here, so thanks to these two young people to step in and uh, play for her today. And we're going to sing a Fill Me Up by Pepper Choplin.
you're ready to help read our scripture lesson today. So what I'm going to ask, you can see how it goes from one page to the next, so we do have a page turn. I need pilgrims. I need some voices of pilgrims and full disclosure, this is the Pentecost reading, you've got all of those resident names. Do the best you can, all right? There's no grade. We're just, the grade is participation, okay? So you'll see on the second page, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Mesopotamians, and on, all right? I also need some skeptics. I need some skeptics in the room. And there can be many voices of skeptics, all right? And then I need a Peter. Who would be Peter's voice? I will. Thanks. All right. So you've got Peter. I'll do the rest. If it's in italics, I'll handle that as the narrator. Okay. Have you decided if you're a pilgrim? Great. Any other pilgrims? Great. All right. Y'all all speak out and you'll find your unison there. Do I have some skeptics in the room? Oh, yeah. Okay. Great. All right. Just as long as I have at least a handful. You are welcome to join in in any of those, all right? I want to remind us, there's a footnote in here. This particular translation is given some explanation, but it is, um, it is done with a combination of scholars and artists and actors, and it's a translation called The Voice. I don't use it a whole lot, but I wanted it to awaken our Pentecost senses, all right? Here is the word of the Lord according to Acts. When the holy day of Pentecost came, 50 days after Passover, they were gathered together in one place. Picture yourself among the disciples. A sound roars from the sky without warning, the roar of a violent wind, and the whole house where you are gathered reverberates with a sound. Then a flame appears, dividing into smaller flames and spreading from one person to the next. All the people present are filled with the Holy Spirit and begin speaking in languages they've never spoken before as the Spirit empowers them. Because of the holy festival, there are devout Jews staying as pilgrims in Jerusalem from every nation under the sun. They hear the sound and a crowd gathers. They are amazed because each of them can hear the group speaking in their native languages. They are shocked and amazed by this. Just a minute. Aren't all these people Galileans? How in the world will we hear our we all hear our native language being spoken? Look, there are Parthians here, and these, Elamites, Mesopotamians, Indians, residents of Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygians, Amphibians, Egyptians, and Libyans from Crete, Romans, including both Jews, like her, and Hunters, Cretans, and Arabs, we each in our own languages. Their amazement becomes confusion as they wonder, what, what does this mean? It doesn't mean anything. They're all drunk on some fresh wine. <laughs> this miraculous, miraculous sign of God's kingdom is astounding. 
The followers of Jesus are not known as people who drink too much wine with breakfast, so this fantastic episode requires some other kind of explanation. Unfortunately, it is impossible to comprehend or explain what transpires on Pentecost, but this is not a novelty performance. Rather, it is the foundation of the kingdom of God in that it establishes the church as the place where God moves on the earth through his spirit. They expect a political kingdom, but God moves in people's hearts to transform individuals and communities. As the twelve stood together, Peter shouted to the crowd, Men of Judea, and now who are staying here in Jerusalem, listen, I want you to understand, these people are as drunk as you may think. Look, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this isn't drunkenness. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Job. Hear what God says. In the last days, I will offer my spirit to humanity as a libation. Your children will boldly speak the word of the Lord. Your warriors will see visions, and your elders will dream dreams. Yes, in those days, I shall offer my spirit to all subjects, both male and female, and they will boldly speak my name, my word. And in the heavens above and on earth below, I shall give signs of impending judgment, blood, fire, and clouds of smoke. The sun will become a void of darkness, and the moon will become blood. Then the great and dreadful day of the Lord will arrive. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be liberated into God's freedom and peace. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and joyful and spirit-filled God, thank you so much for the chance to be together, to give our hearts and minds and time to you. So as we have heard your words so beautifully proclaimed, and as we celebrate the birth of your church, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts together be an acceptable living sacrifice and offering to you, O Lord, our rock, our Holy Spirit, our Redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, it is the birthday of the church, so I want to be down here in the church with you for today. Most of you know I am moving to Charlotte on July 1 and beginning a new appointment there. On a walk in one of my favorite spots in all of Asheville, the Arboretum, a friend recently asked me this probing good question. She said, if you knew you only had a year left in Asheville, what would you do differently? <laughs> I told this friend I probably would have gone kayaking more. <laughs> I live right by the river. Her question got me to thinking of this question that I want to ask you today. If you knew you only had one year left at Trinity, what would you do differently? I'll invite your responses in a moment, but allow me in this short time to open a window on my own answer to that very question. Even though we United Methodist pastors only serve for one year at a time at the pleasure of the bishop, if I knew my last Pentecost that I would have been entering into last year this time at Trinity, I've asked myself what I might have done differently had I known that. And I think I would have talked to the Holy Spirit some more. I know um, that growing up in the United Methodist Church as I did, my home church was no different in the 70s, perhaps than 
here or ones you grew up in. My home church, by the time I came along, grew up a bit afraid of the Holy Spirit. Here's what I mean. The charismatic movement had come along through my home church in the 60s and early 70s, and people became divided. The tongues were not divided, they became divided over worship styles and expressions of faith, arguing whether they were full of the Spirit or too timid to follow the Spirit. And I believe many of us coming out of that church have this impression that to follow the Holy Spirit means we will have to be loud, boisterous, full of action, perhaps even turned into an extrovert. I recently heard a description of Rosa Parks as an introvert and as someone who chose to invite the Holy Spirit to sit down beside her when she decided to sit down in an act of passive, not aggression, passive nonviolence. That historic moment that we all know of in 1955 was not the first time, though. You may know this story, that 12 years earlier, 12 years earlier than 1955, back in 1943, Rosa was getting on a bus and found the rear entry to the bus to be too crowded. She couldn't get on board. So she went up to the front of the bus to that door and entered there and was planning to make her way to the back. The bus driver, whose name is James Blake, and in this story, there were some descriptions around James Blake that I have chosen not to say today. <laughs> James Blake, the white bus driver, would not allow it. And instead, he used his breath to hurl winds of hatred back at Rosa. And he also tried to physically push her off the bus. Upon asking him not to touch her, saying she would leave the bus on her own, Rosa dropped her purse intentionally and intuitively. And then, in order to pick up the purse, she sat down on the front seat in order to pick it back up before exiting the bus. A playful, powerful, and passively nonviolent response to violence being hurled at her. Such acts of passive nonviolence were not really being taught in 1943, were they? They were known, but they were not really being taught yet. And as it was shared with me from a biography on her, Mrs. Parks got on the bus later, 12 years later, in 1955, somewhat absent-mindedly, they said. Guess who the bus driver was? James Blake. <laughs> it's like you can't make this up. The spirit moves how the spirit moves. And isn't this lovely when this happens? I'm just going to so miss this. The spirit moves how the spirit moves. Well, you know the rest of that 1955 story and the legal unfolding that happened around that that would proclaim her the mother of the civil rights movement. That day in 1955 actually began back in 1943 when she met the moment boldly and quietly. Knowing it would be my last year at Trinity, I think I would have asked the Holy Spirit to sit down with me and rest next to me before I would move. To quote the pilgrims in today's Acts dramatic reading, what does this mean, Nancy? Well, here's what I mean, and I'm going to give a little bit of history here. This story, as you know, takes place not long after Jesus' ascension. Jesus' ascension is quoted as being about 40 days after the resurrection, right? Pilgrims 
at this point in Acts, we're arriving in the big city. Woo-wee, as my friend Jan would have said. That's kind of what it feels like when I start driving into Charlotte, the big city. They were driving, no, they were arriving at the Jerusalem temple, and they were there to celebrate one of the major pilgrimage festivals called Shavuot, celebrating the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. So the disciples had just returned from Jesus' ascension back in Jerusalem, not too far away. And as they and the other pilgrims gathered to give thanks for the law in this celebration, Shavuot, God's Holy Spirit moved again. (laughs) God's Holy Spirit moved across all of those gathering for that pilgrimage to give thanks for the law, as good Jews do. God's Holy Spirit moved in a new way. As you heard it described, as flames of tongues of fire appearing and then dividing into smaller flames and spreading from one person to the next to the next. The more traditional translations of this story say that the flames rested on them. The Greek word used for rested, kathizo, it means comes to rest or to be seated next to. I love the thought of the Holy Spirit coming and not prodding me necessarily, but being seated next to me. And like a a good friend or perhaps a sibling coming and plopping down and sitting next to you on the couch and then quietly provoking you, enabling you to act or speak. However, it wasn't to stand up and tell a joke, was it? It was the spirit provoking quietly these people to speak in multiple languages and dialects. The Holy Spirit rested not only on the people speaking, it came over the whole gathering, it says, the entire gathering, because we know those listening were from far beyond Jerusalem, and they were able to understand. They heard their languages and dialects being spoken by people who ought not to have been able to have done that. And what was being spoken? We're not told exactly but we know that there's a nod to vision and prophecy and dreams and embodiment of good news. And if you keep reading beyond today's section, you get a sense of what they were speaking. Good news of Jesus Christ. Some, though, taken aback, thought that these Galilean, junior varsity, Motel 6 kind of pilgrims because every time you hear Galilee, that's kind of what comes to mind. They thought these folks had hit the bottle hard before coming to temple that morning. Peter, ever the mouthpiece, spoke up boldly, as Peter does. I imagine as Peter being an extrovert in this situation. He spoke up boldly to disavow them of this understanding, saying, as we heard G.A. so beautifully read, People of Judea! and all who were staying here in Jerusalem. And that was a lot of people, y'all. Listen, I want you to understand, he says. These people aren't drunk, as you may think. Look, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, this isn't drunkenness. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. Hear what God says. In the last days, I will offer my spirit to humanity. As a libation, your children will boldly speak the word of the Lord. This is the Holy Spirit, y'all. The same one named in the Torah that was given to Moses. The same one named in the writings and the music of the Psalms. And the one named in prophets like Joel. This is the Holy Spirit showing up. To give them understanding not only for themselves, but of one another, this capacity to listen to one another and to bring them together under this new story of Jesus, who is the very embodiment in the flesh of the law. This is what the law means. Jesus. 
be in relationship with God. This is what the law means. So the Holy Spirit has come and rested upon and settled beside God's people in a new and a healing way. Fifty days after Passover, 50 days after Passover is where we get the name Pentecost, 50 days, connecting us to that same pilgrimage festival. When Moses shared the law, we know some did not receive it well. After all, they had been busy back in camp making idols, right? Jesus, like the law, came and disrupted those habits. Jesus promised before he ascended the Holy Spirit and God delivered yet again on Pentecost as God tends to do. Amen? God didn't show up this time, though, with stone tablets for Peter to deliver. God showed up through this wind like we heard on those beautiful marimbas. God's Holy Spirit came and showed up beside people resting on them, giving this capacity to speak languages they had never studied. Regardless of being introvert, extrovert, evangelical, Pentecostal, or mainline, God showed up when the Holy Spirit rested on those disciples and the other Galilean pilgrims. God used the harmony of various languages to speak the good news. And if you go a little bit beyond today's reading, the end of chapter 2, you will see how those disciples further met the moment boldly, not letting doubters and haters, to quote the gospel according to Taylor Swift, not letting the doubters, I just want to make sure y'all are awake, sway their message. They were proclaiming Jesus' story in multiple languages, bringing, as it says later, 3,000 people to be baptized. There were Jewish bathing areas all around the temple courts. They had baptism right there, 3,000 of them, all because they met that moment when the Holy Spirit showed up and they said yes, yes to God. Ultimately, sisters and brothers, meeting the moment, the theme of this series that we're concluding today, is not only experiencing the Holy Spirit, it's allowing the Holy Spirit to invite you into some kind of action, big or small, that makes a difference to God, to your neighbor, and to yourself. We could replace the word moment with Holy Spirit, as in meet the Holy Spirit. To do this, to do this though, it is very helpful for us to learn how we recognize the Holy Spirit. I've asked some of you that question. It's one of my favorite questions to ask one-on-one -on -one of people. How do you know when the Holy Spirit is trying to capture your attention? How do you sense when the Spirit is moving in your life? I've often shared with you, I feel it right here in the small of my back and I pay attention. It's like Jesus being the physical embodiment of law. Well, that's the physical embodiment of the Holy Spirit for me. I'd love to know how it happens for you. It may not be something physical. Another friend of mine talks about something happening in her mind and her thoughts have great clarity. And so I want to ask you, if you knew you had one year left at Trinity, what would you do differently? I hope you would not be afraid of what others might accuse you of. <laughs> Being drunk seems so little when we're talking about it's the Holy Spirit moving. To not be afraid. What would you do differently? And then I want to simply ask, who or what's stopping you? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and all God's children said, Amen.
you'll turn to page 334. You may remain seated for this middle hymn, Sweet, Sweet Spirit, 334 in the United Methodist Hymn. to pray with all of our hearts and voices together. You are welcome to join at the rail and please join from the pew and join from home. God, the Holy Spirit, you are the restless breath of love that sweeps through our world. You move where you will. You break down barriers. You stir hearts to change. You make all things possible. Come, Spirit of God, as we pray for our church, your church, and indeed the world as we also pray for ourselves. Bring transformation in our praying and in our living so that we may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you all the days of our lives. God of the flaming Pentecost, as you come and rest upon us, and sit beside us. Help us speak in tongues of comfort to those weeping over the bodies of their loved ones, whether they be taken by troubled gunmen, suffering loss in border clashes, or dying from disease of body, mind, and spirit. Help us speak in tongues of comfort. Let us speak in tongues of courage, too, to those living in fear, fear of the next shooting, the next bomb, the next illness that threatens. Let us speak in tongues of courage. Guide us, O oh great spirit, to speak 
in tongues of condemnation against laws and policies here in this world that promote violence, that prioritize some over others. Give us the courage to speak in tongues of justice. Let us speak in tongues of care for the most vulnerable in our world. For young people, for elders living alone, for human beings who are troubled and have no one to speak for them, and indeed for all of your creation depending on us, let us speak in tongues of care. Gracious God, let us speak in tongues of love for you and for your people and for ourselves. Help us to know that your language might be our language so that you and your Holy Spirit will guide us to speak in tongues of love. And God, when our tongues are still, when we have no words to speak, let our hearts burn with your fire. Let our ears hear your words in our own native tongue. Let our skin feel the wind of your Holy Spirit, a mighty wind blowing where it will. Our voices together pray this in the name of the one who taught us how to follow your law through his very body. Jesus, who prays with us now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So if you'll rise in body or in spirit for him 404, every time I feel the spirit, 404.
<laughs> just because the spirit moves. <laughs> and brothers, thank you for being here on this Pentecost Sunday. I hope you will be able to stay for our congregational meeting and celebrate the birthday of the church. There's a lot of good food in the library and go in peace and knowledge that God loves you, that I love you, and that we are called to go and share that love. In the name of Christ, amen.